today is our Sandpoint and Bonner Mall branch manager, Crystal. Thank you for being here, Crystal. And thank, thank you me. for joining. Oh, and thank you for joining us for today's pop-up on credit scores and reports. Just a quick housekeeping note, everyone has been muted upon entry, but to request to be unmuted, click the raise hand button on your screen or feel free to use the chat for any questions. Credit can have a big impact on your life. Your credit report provides a snapshot of your financial habits that financial inst institutions, cell phone companies, credit card companies, and others use to get a sense of your credit worthiness. Understanding how credit scores and reports work will help you keep your finances healthy and help you achieve your financial goals, such as buying a home, purchasing a car, or paying off debt. Click the raise hand button if you've ever checked your credit score. If you've ever requested a copy of your credit report. All right, before we get into why credit scores are important, let's discuss what they actually are. A credit score is a three digit rating that tells a lender how likely you are to repay debt. Different lenders use different criteria to calculate it. Poor credit is less than 579. People with a score of 579 or below could probably use help to rebuild their credit history. Fair credit is between 580 and 670. In this range, it may be difficult to qualify for loans. And if you do get the loan, it may have a higher interest rate. Good credit is between 660 and 740. If your credit is between 660 and 740, you may have blemishes on your credit report and you might still be restricted to higher, to higher interest rates on loans. A very good credit score is between 740 and 799. A credit score in this range is very good. You will probably qualify for most loans and will probably have a solid credit history with few missed or late payments. Exceptional credit is between 800 and 850. If your credit score is above 800, you have the strongest credit history and qualify for the best loan terms and interest rates. Remember, these credit score ratings are for informational purposes only. Later, we will learn how credit scores are calculated. Your credit score can be poor, fair, good, very good, or exceptional. But what if you don't have a credit history at all? Many people, especially young people or people who have recently immigrated to this country, have no credit history. It's not a bad thing. It's not the same as having bad or poor credit. Although people without a credit history will face similar difficulties in getting loans and proving their credit worthiness. However, there are many steps you can take to start building credit. Step one, open a line of credit. A good example would be a credit card through your credit union or a small loan that you can repay on time and in full. Special products such as secured loans are designed to help you boost your credit, but they may have restrictions on how much money you can borrow or may require cash collateral. Step two, request that your payment history be reported. If you pay your rent and utilities on time, you can request that your landlord or utility company report your positive payment history to the credit bureaus. However, remember that your landlord or utility company is not required to do so, even if you ask. Step three, open a joint account. You may request a family member or friend with good credit to co-sign on a loan or credit application, but remember that your actions will also affect their credit. Also, make sure joint accounts are reported to the credit bureaus. Step four, pay all your bills on time and in full. Never miss a payment. If you think you're about to miss a payment, contact the creditor and see what options are available. But how does your credit score affect your daily life and ability to reach your financial goals? Let's look at a scenario. Meet Anna and Bella. This is a tale of two friends. Anna and Bella have been friends since middle school. They both own cars and have steady incomes to pay their bills. Anna's credit score is 530, while Bella's is 700. Anna and Bella decide to buy homes in their childhood neighborhood. One of them receives a loan without any trouble. Unfortunately, the other has a difficult time getting a loan. And when she finally gets her loan approved, her interest rate and insurance premiums are higher than her friends. Credit scores are not the only factor that lenders consider. Factors such as the market, down payment amounts, loan terms, and lender loan policies can influence the cost of a loan. Still, experts and research show that one's credit score has a large effect on the cost of a loan. Now that you know Anna and Bella's story, let's see if we can figure out a few details. I'll launch a quick poll.
So who do you think is more likely to have trouble getting the loan, Anna or Bella? And whose interest and insurance rates would likely be higher, Anna or Bella? That's right, Anna for both. People with poor credit scores tend to have the most trouble getting loans, even though there are other factors that institutions consider. And Anna would also have higher interest and insurance rates likely since her poor credit would also increase those. All right. <clears throat> as you've seen, credit scores can affect your ability to get a loan, as well as your interest and insurance rates. They can also affect your eligibility for a rental home, as many homeowners and property managers check credit scores before renting a property. Your credit score can have an impact on many areas of your life, including getting a car, getting a job, setting up utilities and phone service. Your credit score is taken into account for an auto loan if you buy a car. It can also be difficult to qualify for an auto lease without, with poor credit. In some states, employers may check job candidates' credit scores to learn more about people's reliability. And with poor credit, it can be harder to set up an account with utility companies and internet and cell phone service providers, and deposits may even be required. Essentially, any persons or organizations that you are seeking credit from may review your credit report to ensure that they're lending to a responsible borrower. So much depends on this three-digit score. Who actually comes up with the credit scoring system? Can you name any credit scoring companies that you've heard of? Type them in the chat if so. There are many agencies that prepare credit scores and they use different models to calculate them. However, the most popular scoring models are FICO and Vantage score. There are three main credit bureaus in the United States, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. They, along with lenders, use their own version of the FICO or Vantage score credit scoring models. The bureaus keep track of your credit score credit history separately, so it's a good idea to utilize each one. If there are large variations or discrepancies among the reports, you should get in touch with the bureaus to figure out why. Credit scores may also be different depending on the financial product you are applying for. For example, mortgage applications may yield a different credit score for you than if you were applying for a credit card. So how are credit scores calculated? As mentioned earlier, different bureaus calculate your credit score in different ways. While the bureaus do not disclose the exact methods or formulas they use to calculate your score, we do know the general factors that they consider. The most important factors that affect your credit score are your payment history and the amount of debt that you owe. Let's take a closer look at these factors and others that make up your credit score. Payment history primarily includes looking at whether or not you pay your bills on time. Do you always pay at least the minimum amount? If you do, then you're in good shape. If you, do, if you make even one late payment though, it will likely have a negative impact. That's why it's so important that you always pay your bills on time and pay at least the minimum amount. The amount owed, or the, excuse me, the amount you owe depends on a few factors. Owing money doesn't necessarily mean you're a risk to lenders. The most critical thing is showing that you make regular on-time payments towards your debts. The important piece here is what percentage of your available credit you are using. Typically, people who are using less than 30% of their total available credit would be a lower risk for a lender than people who are using, say, 90% of their available credit. Simply put, maxing out your credit card can negatively impact your credit score. The length of your credit history. Credit history is affected by how long you've been managing credit. The longer your credit history, the more information a lender has about your repayment habits and reliability. People with a short credit history, even if it's steady and good, may be at a disadvantage because lenders may consider them to be a higher risk. So it's important to build and maintain good credit early. New credit or credit that you've recently applied for accounts for a smaller part of your credit score. Each time you apply for new credit, a lender runs a check on your credit score, and it temporarily decreases your score. It signals that you might be using too much of your available credit. There are limited exceptions, but this is most often true. A smaller portion of your credit score depends on the types of credit you have. 
People with a mix of credit types like credit cards, an auto loan, and a mortgage loan may have a slightly higher score than those with only one credit type. Credit scores are extremely complex and your actions and everyday decisions can influence your finances. What about someone else's actions? Can they affect your credit score? Many people think that co-signing on a loan is a helpful action to take, especially if the person is your child, significant other, parent, or close friend. Similarly, many married couples or people in long-term relationships decide to merge their finances. It's important to know how this decision may affect your own credit score. Have you ever co-signed a loan or asked someone to co-sign a loan for you? Have you ever signed a joint credit application with a spouse or other family member? Have you ever been added as an authorized user on someone else's credit card or added an authorized user to your own? Let's look at a few scenarios to see how co-signing, merging finances, and sharing lines of credit can affect your score. Miss Anna again. Anna's house is in foreclosure. She has taken some steps to improve her credit and is now eligible for a loan. Anna wants to use the loan to try to stop the foreclosure process, but she has a problem. She needs someone to co-sign. Should her best friend Bella co-sign on a loan with Anna? How will co-signing affect Bella's credit score? Will co-signing affect Bella's credit score? It won't necessarily impact Bella's credit score, but the loan will appear on her credit report. And when you co-sign for a loan, you are promising to repay that loan if the other person does not do so. If Anna pays off her loan on time, it could actually help improve both Anna and Bella's credit scores. But if she does not pay her loan or she misses payments, it will negatively affect both of their credit scores. Let's look at another scenario. <clears throat> Michael and Tamika are getting married in two weeks. They are thinking about merging their finances by opening a joint checking account and applying for a joint credit card. Tamika has a good credit score, but Michael does not. Should they sign up for joint credit? How will merging finances affect, with Michael affect Tamika's ability to get a loan? So no, merely having a joint account doesn't affect a credit score unless that account becomes charged off or goes to collections. Yes, it will affect Tamika's credit score negatively if Michael doesn't pay his portion of their joint bills. It could affect her ability to borrow as well since she may be considered higher risk when they see both scores. Many couples choose to get joint accounts because it's convenient. It's important to remember that even if couples merge their finances, they will still have their own individual credit scores since there is no such thing as a joint credit score. In this case, Michael's score may not negatively affect Tamika's credit score, but it could negatively, negatively affect her in other ways. They may receive a higher interest rate on a car or house because lenders may evaluate both of their credit scores to calculate the risk of lending to them together. This is not always the case as some lenders may look only at the highest score, the lowest score, or sometimes both, but it's important to be aware that a partner's poor or bad credit score may affect you in some cases. Applying for credit on your own or with someone else can affect your credit score. Be mindful of your own credit score before making decisions to co-sign a loan or merge accounts with anyone. Their actions, like not paying back a loan, can damage your credit. Also, their credit score can affect the cost of financial products for both of you. Adding an authorized user to a credit card is also a common way to share credit, but keep in mind that the primary cardholder is responsible for paying all the bills. And if you both use the card responsibly, it can increase both of your credit scores. However, adding an authorized user can be a risk for the primary cardholder and authorized user with the potential to impact both of their scores negatively. Now I'll go ahead and hand it over to Crystal who will walk us through what exactly is a credit report, where you can get your free reports, how to get your credit score, and how to read your report. So we've talked a lot about credit scores, but what about credit reports? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are they different? Your credit report is a snapshot of your credit profile, including your credit history. Every time you take out a loan or apply for a credit card, those actions will appear on your credit report. It's important to review your credit report regularly. It's one of the tools you can use to help build and maintain good credit. The three nationwide credit reporting bureaus calculate your credit score based on the factors that affect it. Many people wrongly assume that checking their credit score or report will affect it negatively. 
not true. In fact, keeping an eye on your credit report can help you in many ways. It can help you detect fraud and maintain or work toward a better, better credit score. You can get one free credit report from each of the three credit bureaus per year online or by phone. To get your free credit reports, go to annual recredit, excuse me, go to annual credit report at annualcreditreport.com, which is seen on the screen. It's the only website that is federally authorized to give you your credit report for free, and it's maintained by the Federal Trade Commission. You can also request your report for free via telephone at 877-322-8228, again, seen on the screen. Because you can only request your Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion credit reports for free once a year, consider spacing out your requests to maintain an eye on them about every four months. You're entitled to one free extra credit report under certain circumstances to verify information. For example, if you review your credit report and notice inaccuracies as a result of fraud, such as identity theft, if you've been denied a loan, credit or insurance, or even employment, and if that denial was based on your credit report. If you are unemployed, but plan to look for a job within 60 days, or if you're on certain government programs. But what about your credit score? Is that included in your free reports? Credit scores, unlike your credit history, are not currently included in the free credit reports available. You can get your credit score by requesting it from various companies, including the different bureaus, but all of these will charge a fee. So once you've requested and received your free credit report, how do you make sense of it? Your credit report will contain four major sections. Review each section thoroughly for accuracy and make a note of any inaccuracies, unknown or suspicious details. We'll get to disputing and correcting those errors shortly. There are four major sections in a credit report. Personal information, which contains your name, birth date, social security number and address, as well as the name of your spouse and your employer. Public records, which contain information about bankruptcies, judgments, and any delinquent or unpaid taxes. Credit accounts, this section contains information about your debts and whether you've been paying your bills and loans on time or have been missing payments and are at risk for delinquency. It can also include information about both open and closed accounts. Credit inquiries. This includes information about organizations, people, or agencies that have requested to verify your credit in the past two years. There is also some information that won't be included. Medical information, religion, race, and sex, as well as information about your checking or savings accounts, any debit or prepaid cards, or private loans you've received from benefactors, friends, or family. Requesting and receiving the information on your credit report is the first step towards maintaining and building healthy credit. So what are some important things to look for? Let's find out. It's important to review your credit report regularly to make sure the information is accurate and up to date. Your credit report contains information about your credit history and how well you manage debt. It can also be affected by public records such as bankruptcies, unpaid debt or bills, or how much of your available credit you're using. Most of these types of information can remain on your credit report for up to seven years. Bankruptcies though can remain on your report for up to 10 years and certain tax liens could be there indefinitely if not paid off. Look at the following dates carefully. The date the account was opened. Remember, the length of your credit history accounts for a good part of your credit score. Make sure that the opening or closing dates of accounts are listed correctly. Date of delinquency. Review delinquent loans to ensure the dates are accurate and less than seven years old. Dates of public record. Any public records of legal activity should be erased from your credit report after seven years. Remember 10 for bankruptcies. Dates of credit requests. Whenever anyone, a lender, financial institution, employer, or homeowner requests your credit report, your score may be affected. Check the dates to make sure they correspond with events in your life. 
If you notice any errors, you must dispute them with the credit bureaus. Some people choose to work with credit repair companies, but before you do, it's good to know your rights. Thank you so much, Crystal. That was great and very useful information. Next, we'll move on to repairing your credit. Reviewing your credit reports thoroughly is good practice. If you come across information that is incorrect or fraudulent, you can take action. The first step is knowing your rights. Credit repair companies will offer to fix your credit for a fee. However, know that the Credit Repair Organizations Act prevents credit repair, excuse me, credit repair organizations from engaging in deceptive practices, such as false advertising that can cause you harm. It requires these organizations to be transparent about what they can do for you. In other words, credit repair organizations may not overpromise, for example, to delete all bad credit irrespective of whether it is a legitimate debt that you have accrued. Also, credit repair services cannot demand advance payment, must put contracts in writing, and must offer consumers contract cancellation rights. Your rights as a consumer are protected, so what can you do if you have bad credit? Repairing your credit means that you'll have to take a hard look at your finances, bills, and spending habits. As you know, unpaid debt, tax liens, and judgments can negatively affect your credit score. So what can you do to repair your credit once it has been damaged? Step one, contact the credit reporting bureaus and inform them of any errors or false entries. Include your credit report, list the items that are disputed, and clearly state your reasons for disputing the items. Include copies, not originals, of any documents that support your request for correction. Mail this request via certified mail and request a return receipt to ensure that it has been received. The credit reporting bureaus are obligated to respond to you, usually within 30 days. However, if they decide that your dispute is based on unfounded claims, they may not do so. Make sure that you include all supporting documentation for your request. Step two, at the same time, contact the company that provided the information to the credit reporting bureaus and inform them of any errors. The company could be a credit card company, a financial institution, or other that denied your service based on information in your credit report. Include the same information, copies only, and mail this request via certified email, excuse me, via certified mail as well. Preventing fraud and fixing incorrect information are important reasons for reviewing and checking your credit report regularly. But what happens if you have experienced an unexpected life event, such as a bankruptcy or a divorce? If you've been through a bankruptcy, foreclosure, or divorce, there are steps you can take to reestablish your credit. They are very similar to how, you, how to establish credit in the first place. Step one is to monitor your credit report and your scores. Step two is to pay your bills on time and regularly. Nothing builds credit faster than regular and consistent payments. Step three, get credit counseling. Not-for-profit agencies such as GreenPath Financial Wellness, offered to Horizon Credit Union members, advise people about money and debt management, help create financial plans, and offer workshops. And finally, step four, consider your financial product options. As discussed, getting a secured loan can build your credit. However, there may be trade-offs, such as fees or minimum deposit amounts, that you should understand and ask the credit union about before applying. Now let's look at how you can identify potential scams from credit repair companies. <clears throat> let's return to Anna. She has been unable to pay her mortgage, and her house has fallen into foreclosure. She has researched several, several credit repair companies. Let's see if we can help her recognize the good from the bad. The first company promises to remove bad credit information from Anna's report. All she has to do is pay an upfront fee. The company assures her that they can scrub all negative information from her report. How many red flags did you catch there? The company that Anna found promised to remove all bad credit information from her report and required her to pay an upfront fee. Should she do it? Anna should definitely not trust the company's promise to remove all bad credit notes from her credit report for an upfront fee. According to the Federal Credit Report Repair Organizations Act, credit repair companies must successfully remove the credit inac inaccuracies from an individual's report and provide proof that the report has been changed before they can request payment for services. It can take up to six months. Anna should also be suspicious of any company that promises or guarantees to remove all bad credit information. That's a red flag. 
credit repair companies can only remove negative information that is inaccurate or a result of fraud, not legitimate negative information. The same company also advises Anna not to contact the credit bureaus directly, as doing this could negatively affect their efforts. Should Anna listen to this company? Anna should not trust any company that recommends or advises against contacting the credit bureaus. That is another major red flag. So to recap, there are many red flags you can spot in a credit repair scam. They include the following, requiring upfront, upfront fees for a credit repair service, promising to remove all negative credit information from a credit report, offering to scrub or alter legitimate credit information, and instructing you not to contact the credit bureaus directly. You are entitled to dispute errors for free and it is your legal right to do so. Some additional things to look for would be asking for a signature on blank paperwork. If an agency asks you to sign blank paperwork so it can act on your behalf, that is a scam. Never sign blank paperwork, especially legal paperwork, without reading through it thoroughly, ideally with the help of a lawyer. Credit profile scams, promises of, new credit promises of a new credit identity by issuing a credit profile number or a credit privacy number that is similar to a social security number is a scam. Fake social security number scams, any agency that encourages you to use a fake social security number or apply for an employer identification number or EIN for tax purposes is a scam. EINs are typically used by businesses, not individuals. Legitimate credit repair companies can help to remove incorrect or fraudulent inf information on your credit reports. Credit counseling agencies can also help you to improve, improve your credit. We'll look at that next. If your credit report is poor, you may consider taking advantage of credit counseling services. Like I mentioned before, Green Path Financial Wellness is a great example of a legitimate credit counseling company endorsed by the NFCC and offered to Horizon Credit Union members. These agencies may help you create a financial plan to decrease your debts. And if you choose credit counseling agencies, if you choose to use credit counseling agencies, look for agencies accredited with either the NFCC, the National Foundation for Credit Counseling, or the FCA, A, the Financial Coaching Association of America. Look for services such as better money management techniques, debt reduction strategies, and financial plan development. And get information about their services and possible fees before paying anything or providing any private information. Before we move on, let's watch a fun quick video with seven tips you can use to boost your own credit score. Oh, good. Yes? Credit Squirrel, hey, I need some help building my credit score. Shh, shh. Yes, of course. Come in. Um, okay. Right. Here are seven ways to build and maintain good credit scores. Number one, pay your bills on time. Don't hide them and don't pretend they don't exist. Pay your statement balance in full each month. That's simple enough. Number two. Part of your credit score is based on the length of your credit history. So if you're just starting out, open one credit card and use it for small, regular, manageable payments, like a cell phone bill or gas. Okay, something I know I can pay off every month. Indeed. Three, keep your credit utilization low. This means using only a small portion of your available credit. I don't think I understand. Example, if you have $1,000 of credit available, and you're using almost all of it each month, it makes you look as though you rely heavily on that credit line. Keeping your utilization down to about 10% keeps your credit score in tip-top shape. 10% utilization. Got it. Four, don't open a large amount of credit cards in a short time. Lots of inquiries on your credit report within a short time frame makes your score drop. Five, to give your score an extra boost, have a variety of credit. A mix of credit cards, retail cards, utility bills and installment loans keeps your score balanced. Nice. Six, try not to carry a balance. 
pay off your statement balance every month. What if I can't afford to do that? If you can't afford to pay something off in a month, you probably shouldn't be putting it on a credit card in the first place. A credit card shouldn't be treated like extra income. Budget wisely. Making only the minimum payments each month can get you in trouble very quickly with all the interest you have to pay. Yikes! And finally, number seven, monitor your credit. There are free sites you can use to get a good estimate of your credit score, as well as paid services to access the exact scores. That's really great. Thank you so much, Credit Squirrel. Once again, you've been incredibly helpful. Oh, I, I was just getting advice from the Credit Squirrel. He lives in this tree, and, uh, you know what? Never mind. Everybody can go away now. All right, we'll get our presentation back here. Okay, so we have covered a lot of things that could potentially affect your score, your credit score. The good news, just like we learned in the video, a few good habits and strategies around managing your credit and debt can go a long way toward helping you keep your credit score high. Here are some basic strategies again for you. Use your available credit wisely. Use less than 30% of your available credit. Do not max out your credit cards. I know that the video said 10%, but that may not be realistic for some people, so try to keep it under 30 if you can. Pay your bills on time. Easy enough. Pay off your credit cards each month and in full if possible. Doing so shows agencies that you are responsible and reduces your credit utilization. Pay your loans on time. Not only does defaulting on your debt cost you more in fees, but it will also quickly damage your score. Do not apply for several credit accounts in a short period of time. Make a plan to reduce debt. Create and follow a monthly budget. Periodically review your credit report for accuracy. Being mindful of your spending and monitoring your credit are good habits to develop when building and maintaining your credit. All right, so to summarize all that we've learned, your credit score is something that can affect your entire financial life, so make sure to take good care of it. A credit score can help you to achieve more of your financial dreams. If you have poor credit, don't be discouraged. Keep track of your credit reports on a regular basis and adopt responsible credit habits so your score can be as high as possible. It can feel like an uphill battle and may seem like it's taking a long time, but making small changes now can have a big payoff later. All right, well, thank you for joining Crystal and I for today's pop-up. Are there any questions that we can answer? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get up my final couple of slides here just to share a little bit more about Green Path and the resources that we have available at the HCCU Financial Training Ground. All right, so here on the screen is our Green Path, Green Path Financial Wellness, that's that credit counseling. It's available for members via hccu.org and the link on, and phone number shown on the screen. They offer a free credit report review, which would be a great idea to take advantage of if you're trying to improve that credit score. And free annual credit reports at, at annualcreditreport.com. To keep tabs on your credit, get your free credit report from all three bureaus each year at annualcreditreport.com. And I'm not sure how long this offer lasts, but as you can see on the screen there, currently you can access your credit report for free weekly rather than annually at this site due to the pandemic. And last but not least, continue your financial journey. Explore the Horizon Credit Union Financial Training Ground for free with interactive guides on a variety of financial topics at the top link on the screen there, or create your personalized financial education playlist at the bottom link. All right, well, thank you so much again for joining us today. And I don't see any questions there, so we will go ahead and wrap it up. And thank you again, Crystal. Thank you.